Uh, today, or this afternoon, we are removing the soft tissue sarcoma from the lateral aspect of the elbow in a dog. Um, we're also removing an axillary lipoma uh, in the same surgical field. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe to our channel. Make sure you turn on notifications and like the video if you do. Um, and so I'll switch over to the other channel and head back over to the patient. So this is the left elbow, and we've got this very mobile soft tissue sarcoma sitting right here, and then we've got the lipoma sitting right here. And so I am going to remove the lipoma first because I don't care if I get a dirty margin on that. I don't have to worry about contaminating my other surgical field. Whereas if I did my soft tissue sarcoma first, got a dirty margin, I would then contaminate the um, elbow. So making the initial incision over the lipoma first. Lipoma may be underlying some muscle here. Hello, Washington State. So this is, for those of you who are joining us late, I'm removing just a little lipoma from the axilla of this dog, and then we're going to move over and take out this soft tissue sarcoma from the lateral aspect of the elbow. I'm doing the lipoma first just because I don't want to contaminate, if I get dirty margins, I don't want to contaminate the other incision. Um, with sarcoma cells. So lipoma first, I don't care if I get a dirty margin, and then soft tissue sarcoma second. So I'm trying to split the muscle fibers rather than cutting through them. And I did cytology on this mass and I didn't get anything. And so then I just ran it quickly through the CT scanner. And CT might sound like overkill, but it's really good at identifying. Um, I'm sorry, I'm gonna need those three, number three gulpies. Um, so this is a German short hair pointer. So taking out a little um, lipoma to start with, and then we'll remove a soft tissue sarcoma from the elbow. So I'm spreading the fibers of the muscle rather than transecting them. And that's going to be a lot less painful and a lot less effect on function. So let's get our first. And the only reason why we're removing this, so it's usually we only remove lipomas if they're affecting function or if they're doubling in size in 30 days, but this owner was just concerned about it. And since we're already operating in the same area um, to take off the soft tissue sarcoma in the elbow, um, they asked if we could go ahead and take it off at the same time. So a key factor here is um, I'm doing a muscle splitting technique rather than cutting through the muscle. Can I get some 3 PDS please? Leading back here. Can you retract on that, please?
Bleeding more than an amputation. <laughs> nice. The Americans are up very, very late. So have no fear, this is not just a lipoma removal. We'll be moving over to the soft tissue sarcoma in a few minutes. I'll probably let Nadia close this one while I move on to the yep. other one. So what time is it in California? What time is it here? Five. It means it's about 3 a.m. East Coast, midnight in California, I think. I really should get up at about 4 a.m. and do surgery and live stream it to make the Americans happy. <laughs> and Canadians. So now, moving over to our soft tissue sarcoma, it is freely mobile, it's on an extremity, so the likelihood is that it's low or intermediate grade, and so we don't need to go and get the massive margins that we need to if it was a chest or abdominal wall soft tissue sarcoma. So I'm just getting a couple of, or probably a centimeter and a half margin on this. that means that we'll be able to close it primarily because elbow um, reconstruction can be really challenging um, because it's a high motion area. There's a big bony protuberance there. Let me move this forward. So you can see a little better what I'm doing here. So I would not remove a mast cell tumor with a narrow margin on the extremity. I am happy though to remove a soft tissue sarcoma. So this, uh, I did CT it and it's not adhered to the underlying musculature. The CT was overkill for a soft tissue sarcoma. The reason why we CT'd it was actually to make sure that the lipoma was in fact a lipoma.
The elbow is notoriously a very bloody area. Again, a very robust blood supply. Now the radial nerve is going to be immediately deep to where I'm operating here. So we are getting a bit of twitching from direct stimulation of the muscle. So that's our margin there. Happy with, um, but that's a complete margin. And we've got a hole here that we are going to be able to close. And again, I would only do this with a soft tissue sarcoma that I'm confident is going to be lower intermediate grade. So an extremity soft tissue sarcoma. Can I please get some more 2 PDS? Uh, so there's a um, question about if this was over the olecranon, how would we prevent putting our sutures over it? So you really don't have any choice. If you've got a mass over the olecranon, you've got to take that skin out. And so if it's going to be under tension, you're going to have an issue with dehiscence. And so what you can do is you can do a axial pattern flap and that can be from the lateral thoracic, which is right here, the superficial brachial, which is right here, and the thoracodorsal, which is up here. That's really only a concern if your tissue is under tension. If you're doing a, you know, a marginal excision like this that's not under tension, you probably would be okay. So this is 2 PDS. I always do five or six throws with PDS. I think we're probably trained to do four throws, but really, in order to get a knot that's close to or as strong as the surrounding tissue, you've got to do five or six throws. Now this is a high movement area. So we're going to want to encourage exercise restriction for a couple of weeks. Any tips on suturing over high movement areas? Uh, just uh, so Nadia is asking me about tips for suturing uh, high movement areas. It's just doing a lot of layers making sure it's not under tension. Hello, Turkey. I know that we have a lot of viewers from Turkey, at least not live.
Okay, uh, be all right for the minute, thank you. This is my last surgery for the week, because I only operate Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, although if there are emergencies, I'll come in and help out tomorrow. I have an administrative day on Thursday, and then a, my day off is on Friday. So anesthetically, we did a pre-med of acepromazine and methadone, induction with alfaxan, maintenance with isoflurane, um, and we have it on a ventilator because all of our surgery suites have ventilators and we feel like it keeps the patient deeper under the anesthetic. Um, and we have these really nice servo ventilators, which means that it doesn't waste um, bottled oxygen to run the ventilator. And then post-op, we will continue with methadone overnight. And then because this is not a huge incision, we'll use codeine to go home along with an anti-inflammatory, um, which uh, I use a lot of meloxicam. Now, in addition to this intradermal pattern that I'm doing, I'm also going to do some tension-relieving skin sutures just to try to take a bit of the tension away from the skin edge. So is that like horizontal mattress and vertical uh, kind of, cr Kind of a cruciate. If I was really worried about tension, I could do a Z-plasty, but this is not particularly tight. It's exciting, we're, we're not far off hitting 4 million views on YouTube. about to start a YouTube membership program, which you pay a certain amount per month and you get some really high-end content, webinars, priority response to questions and things like that. I'm going to try to announce that tomorrow. I have a bit more work to do to get that set up and decide exactly what additional content we're going to provide. These are debakey tissue forceps, yeah. Uh, they say that there is not a big difference in healing when you use electric cautery to cut the skin compared to scalpel. Um, I think that it's probably quite painful, and so I don't do it a lot. The only reason why I did it with this one is that it's hard to get, you know, when you're pulling on the skin, hard to get a nice, swift, clean cut exactly where you want it with a scalpel. Whereas with electric artery, it's very easy. Can I please have some 2 nylon? 2 nylon, yep. back away from the skin edge a little bit.
trying to disperse that tension away from the skin edge. Just take a second and let us know where everybody's watching from. I know we've got California, I think we've got Washington State, we've got Turkey. Is there anybody else watching from other places? Because this new video streamer that I have doesn't tell me how many people are watching live. And so I'm just curious to see how many we have and where people are watching from. And tell us also, if you're watching the recorded version of this, not the live stream, I'm still interested. Malaysia. India, nice. Suture and I don't have enough nylon, so I'll go back to my PDF. So that's pretty much it. Um, as far as brands of instruments that I like, um, I really like Escalap. Sontec in the U.S. is really good. Tiemann in the U.S. is really good. Pretty much anything German um, is going to be really good. Um, and so that's what I tend to use. So Belgium, another from India, that's fantastic. So anyway, well, that's pretty much it for me. So thank you very much for watching. I don't think I'll be live streaming anything for the rest of the week, but... Next Monday, I'm already fully booked for the whole week, and so um, I've got lots of cases to cut next week. Um, if you haven't already done so, please subscribe to our channel. Make sure you turn on notifications, and uh, don't forget to like and get subscribe notifications and.